Now on both sides of the Mali conflict, there are reports of human rights violations. Joining us now is Corinne Dufka. She is a senior researcher for Human Rights Watch, and she just returned, actually, from Mali, and we're so pleased that you could make it to our studios today. Thank you. So you've been to Mali. This is your fifth trip since the um, conflict started last year. What are you seeing that uh, confirms these reports of human rights violations, at least some of those that were revealed by the UN Human Rights Commission last week? Well, yes, indeed. There have been very serious violations committed by all sides in this conflict since it began in January of last year, first by the separatist Tuareg rebels, mm -hmm. and then, of course, the Islamist forces which occupied the north, and then the Malian army. Most recently, we have seen a few patterns. One of them is with respect to the Islamists um, during uh, the resurgence or since the resurgence of fighting mm -hmm. uh, in early Early January, they they used uh, numerous child soldiers, including many who who perished um, as the, after they were put in harm's way by the Islamists, and they also executed a number of Malian prisoners. Our eyewitnesses uh, documented very disturbing scenes in which seven of them uh, were killed, uh, including five who had been wounded. With respect to the Malian army, we found that they um, they executed, they detained, and then executed at least 13 men who they associated with the Islamist forces, and then dumped their bodies in a series of wells in the town of Severi. We also documented six disappearances by them. Uh, it appears that the Malian army is targeting those groups who are perceived to have supported the Islamist uh, rebels, notably from the Pol uh, Fulani or Pol ethnic group, as well as the Tuaregs and Arabs. And that gets to my next question about what is fueling some of this. You said there's a lot or there's evidence of ethnic tensions. Indeed, there's a very high level of ethnic tension between various different ethnic groups. Um, so this is kind of kind of um, now feeling, falling into this uh, spectrum of the, war, of the conflict, and so it's hard to really tell That's what is causing or what the Islamists or the Malian army is really after? Well, indeed, the ethnic tension is very, very high. Uh, it pits in many ways some of the groups that were displaced uh, primarily from Gao and Timbuktu region against groups that are perceived uh, by them to have supported the, uh, the, the Tuaregs and then later the Islamists. Um, so we're extremely concerned that both pro-government militias as well as the Malian soldiers who do have a very worrying human rights re record could engage in deadly collective uh, punishment. Now, I know you've named some numbers or you've given us some numbers, but there are likely many more violations that are going on that are not necessarily recorded that you can't put a number to. Yes, we're concerned about that. And of course, what will what could perhaps provoke more um, uh, an increase in violence would be the return um, of the populations who fled Gao region primarily, as well as the Tuaregs who have largely fed, uh, fled into neighboring countries. How are civilians prote protected? What would groups like Human Rights Watch, even the, U the UN Human Rights Commission that has brought some of this information to fore, how can the civilians be protected as opposed to just you know, being noted that this is what is happening? Well, it's a very important question because there's a rule of law vacuum in the North. Um, you'll recall that, that the uh, institutions responsible for the protection of civilians, the police, the gendarmerie, the judiciary, all fled um, after uh, March, April when the Islamists and Tuaregs took over. Uh, so that into that vacuum, you know, it's an extremely dangerous uh, mm -hmm. time. And we're asking that, first of all, um, the Malians and the French and the ECOWAS troops uh, patrol proactively to stop uh, any potential uh, rep acts of reprisal. And then for the Malian government to send a very, very clear message that any acts of reprisal and these, these violations uh, would not be tolerated. Before you go, as Human Rights Watch, now that you're back in Washington, what is, where do you take this knowledge? Well, we certainly will continue to document uh, any individual and then patterns of human rights abuses and push for civilian protection to, the be, to be the top of all of, uh, international and national agendas. Thank you so much. Thank you. Corinne Dufka is a senior researcher for Human Rights Watch and uh, well, for West Africa in particular. And she joined us here on In Focus.